Hello. How's everybody doing on Wednesday uh, in February? Today is the 24th and I have a fun project for today. We are going to update some picture frames. So how many of you guys have old picture frames? Uh, you know, I mean, maybe from the 70s, 80s. Maybe you have cool picture frames from the 90s or a couple years, or maybe they're just the wrong color. Maybe that's just not working out for you. So I'm gonna show you how we're gonna take these picture frames that I've had downstairs and update them and make them very unique, cool, and your own. So we're gonna use a couple of different things. I have um, some of the new stencils from Redesign with Prima. I love this one, this one's the lace vintage lace one, but I love this kind of boho design down here. I thought this would be fun to add to the picture frame. So I grabbed that one. This is another favorite stencil of mine. I think it's uh, Elegant Vine, the Elegant Vine stencil, I think. And that's this one here. And yes, it has paint on it. These are clear, not this color. <laughs> uh, and I grabbed this one. I thought maybe we'd kind of pull this one out. I can't remember the name, but I think it's tile, something tile. If you know the name of it, drop a comment and let me know. And um, I grabbed one more and it's called Dotted Flourish. It's kind of a cool design as well. So those are the stencils that we have to choose from. I have some chalk paste from Redesign with Prima here. And just to grab a couple of random colors, one is Iron Gate, which is a black, Aquamarine, which is this cool uh, minty color, and then English Country. And a couple of the frames I've painted just so we can go on to the next step and if some of them don't have any paint on them. So as you come on, say hi, tell me where you're from. My name is Chelsea Evans and I am the owner and furniture artist on Apple Blossom Way and I'm in Utah. So yeah, it's a really, really cool stencil. Feel free to ask questions as we go or uh, give suggestions or ideas. I always like to see kind of what other people are uh, their ideas, like here are ideas and stuff like that. So these two I'd already painted. I put a really light rough coat of the, um, let's see, this is called Chalky White Paste from Redesign with Prima. And I kind of just let the color underneath show a little bit so it looks a little bit like weathered or kind of like a beachy feeling. And then on this one, this is, called gravel, the color, and I just painted it and I just let the brush mark show and kind of kept it rustic. So just put a base coat on my frames. So these are the ones I have. I'm gonna do some stenciling for you on those. And these ones, just, these are really, really cute, simple frames. I love the little bee board front on them. These ones I'm gonna add some transfers to because I think that will be kind of fun. And then, uh, you know, we can, I can show you how to apply the transfer in the grooves. All right, Scotland, Wisconsin, sweet. Kentucky, awesome. Let's, okay, so let's start with the transfers. These are two really beautiful transfers and I haven't used them yet. They're from the new release from Redesign with Prima. One of them is called Flower Fields and it has beautiful strips. It has two strips of like wildflowers kind of, just different florals put together. And then the other one I pulled out is called Spring Branch. And it has, it's just very simple. It has some little thin branches and then some of the um, like berries that come down or yeah, I guess they're berries, yeah. So those are the two I grabbed. So let's pull these out. I can show them to you. All right. So there's two of these pages and they're just really quite beautiful. So we can use all the flowers. We can use a little bit of the flowers. We can cut them up. This is just, it's just gorgeous. I thought this would be really pretty on a wall, um, like above a chair rail or above a beadboard base. And you could put it kind of like a, oh, that's the wrong one like a border. I thought that would be a really pretty one for that. It'd be so cute in a nursery or something. I love that. All right, so let's start with this one. 
and the flower fields. And I've got my two frames here, and most likely I'm gonna keep these frames together, right? So I'm gonna set them side by side, and then I can kind of match up my transfer. So if I set them by each other when I hang them, or hang them by each other, I have uh, a transfer that kind of matches them, that can go over. All right, so I have my pieces here. Now these are old. I've had these for a long time. I painted them a long time ago with, I don't even know what kind of paint it was. Um, I probably painted them 10 years ago. And so it might distress a little bit and I'm kind of planning on that because I want it to look a little bit rustic. So I think I'll start on this side and go over to the yellow. Let's see, and that's gonna come on top of my frame. So let's start and just kind of give us a, give ourselves a rough cut of where we're gonna be. So about here. And I'm gonna have to trim this more, so I'm not trimming it perfectly. Anytime you use a transfer, you want to have scissors by nearby. It makes it much easier to cut up your piece. Oh, I spilled my water. And if we go like this, we're going to be able to see what's not going to get used. So just put it in the back. And then I can kind of look and see, okay, do I want part of that on there? Is it okay if I don't use that part? So I'm gonna cut out this middle part here and then I can take this and put it on top and a little bit on bottom and then I'm still saving it and using it instead of just not using that and I kind of know about where it's gonna land. So I can even take my handy grid that these have now and I can kind of say, okay, it's about, you know, almost to this line and farther on that side and then I can cut from there. So I'm going to kind of just roughly do that. And then I'm going to apply it just on the one edge and then I'll apply the other edge and then I'll add our little middle section to the top and bottom here. And you know what? Let me turn it this way because I like uh, having it not upside down for you all. All right, so let's just go there. We're gonna go right to the edge where we trimmed our, our uh, transfer and we're gonna put it right on the edge here. So it doesn't look like it's missing any parts. And I'm going to start with that edge right here. Okay, and I'm kind of keeping this raised up. I'm gonna use my tool and just kind of burnish it onto it. I'm gonna go in between the crevices as much as I can with the corner. You might have tight crevices sometimes too. You can use like a credit card, something like that. Just don't break your credit card. Okay. Now I'll just go over the next little one. Might crackle a little bit, that's okay. Okay. And now I'll go down onto the flat part, right over here. Oh, I guess that is upside down for you guys. Sorry, I turned it around twice. Okay, and then I'll go on the flat part here. This is cool because you can keep this really, really simple and just use this strand and I have a really simple, beautiful picture frame, maybe add a tiny bit over here, or I can add a bunch to it and make it more noticeable or grand. So it kind of depends on your style, your taste, and, and uh, how much you want on it. I think the simple might actually be really pretty. Okay, it's kind of, so let fill this up and see how this is adhering. A little spot that I need to push down more. For the most part, it's looking pretty good. Oh. 
And then after I get all of this on here, I can distress it if I want to with the, a fine grit sandpaper and kind of let my uh, details and of the wood show through the, the transfer. So I apply like this. I always take my finger and I'm going to go over it again. I'm going to push down into the crevices. You guys see that? Isn't that pretty? So I'm just going to kind of push down into those um, little dips and then we've got that on there. Oh, I love that. It's just kind of simple and really quite beautiful actually. So let's take the rest of our transfer and I can kind of decide, okay, you know, do I want to have some poppies here and, and, you know, kind of keep it busy? Or do we like it simple and maybe we just want to add a little bit of these pink ones here? Maybe just a little bit. What if we do that? So just the corner of the frame is going to get a little bit and then we have this here. So you can kind of see, give you an idea. Like that. Holly likes it. We're going to do it. Okay. So I'm going to kind of do the same thing. I'm going to say, okay, I feel I can trim it on this little line here. Okay. Come here. And you know what? Let's just trim it right down this other grid line. Can you guys see the grid lines on that? So now I can just trim it right down that grid line. It's really nice to have that guide. It makes it a lot easier to use them. And I can take this and set it aside and I can use this little piece on the edge of another one if I want and kind of make it what I want to be. So there. Now I can kind of see about what that's going to look like if I do it there. Or, well, I don't know. I guess I've already done it backwards, huh? Let's see. I could go down on this corner and keep it towards the bottom. No, I think I like that better. Like that. Yeah. What do you guys think? You like that? It's a little bold on top, but I kind of like that. Okay. And I'm going to say it's about just a little bit more than this line. Okay. So let's apply this one. You feel it right off of my backing. And I've got the detail here too. So you don't have to put the whole backing on. I mean, you don't, I'm sorry, you don't have to unpeel the entire backing. You can, you can just peel off part of it and then slowly peel off the rest of the backing as you apply the transfer so that you don't have to hold it with your fingers like this and try and keep it off of your piece. I'm trying not to touch the, the back of the transfer because the oils from your fingers can cause it not to adhere. So I'm kind of trying to hold it on the, just the clear parts, uh, which is probably why it's easier just to keep the backing on or even just to take the backing and kind of set it here while I'm working on this. Oh yeah, that's better. And then I can kind of hold it, but I can still apply it and slowly roll it out. And it's easy to get that off, the backing off. Just burnish it really well. Let's get that tool right into those crevices. I find if you get the edges around the dresser, drawer, side, whatever you're doing, if you get the edges and really take your tool and push hard, it will help the rest of the transfer to kind of have a base and stick from there. So I always make sure that my edges are really, really well flattened out and secured to the piece of furniture or the picture frame, whatever it is that I'm using. Okay. Now we'll just kind of slowly let this lay down. I'm just kind of gently holding it with my fingers. 
and then we'll press down this crevice here. And in. So whenever you're doing a picture frame with details like that, it might take a little bit longer. Just be patient. Um, it's hard to get it in those crevices. If you're doing a flat surface photo frame, it's, it is easier to do it. So if you haven't done a transfer, then do it on a flat surface, try it out. Um, and then it's, then you can kind of practice doing it on something that has a, that's kind of multidimensional. Okay. Oh, I love that poppy up here. It's really pretty. I'm gonna run this over one more time, make sure my edges are down. And I'm slowly, oh. There we go. Okay. Okay. This would be really cool too if we added glaze when we're all done into our beadboard lines, that would really make it pop. It'd give it a little bit of a grunginess, a grungy feel. Hey, Erin, how's it going? Okay. Have any of you done picture frames before? Whether like painting them, updating them, um, adding transfers to them. I would love to see them. If you guys have. Okay. This would be beautiful with like a blended finish underneath. Oh, tequila sunrise, tequila sunset. That's it. Tequila sunset is one of my favorite flowers and they kind of, it kind of looks a little bit like the poppy hair. Um, and it has like a orangey yellow center and a beautiful peachy, um, petals it's, it's absolutely beautiful but that would be cool to do some kind of like a sunrise or the same colors as the tequila sunset flower has and kind of do an ombre finish of like yellow to orange kind of fade out to red or a pink really lightly and blend the paint behind and then put this um, floral transfer over the top i think that would look really awesome somebody do that okay <laughs> That would be beautiful on a dresser and then place this over the top, a blended colorful sunset sunrise finish, like an Arizona sunset. I think that would be beautiful. Yes, I love the, I love wildflowers too. Oh, hello from London. What time is it in London now? When I lived in Spain, I remember it was like eight hours ahead of um, mountain time, I think. So I wanna say London's probably Nine, 10, maybe hours. Okay. So I'm just taking my fingernails again. I'm just pressing into these crevices. And then see, that would be cool too, because if you gave an ombre painted finish behind this, see how my white's showing through? Uh, then those colors would kind of show through, which would be kind of neat. Oh, I think that's pretty. I feel like it needs something down here. What do you guys think? It kind of feels empty. Oh, let's do this. Okay, so I've got my uh, stencils, like I said here. I think this would be really cool to have a dark black pop, especially at the bottom because um, it will add um, like weight to the base of the picture and it won't feel so empty at the bottom. And so let's see what we've got. Yeah. Ooh, that'd be kind of cool. What do you guys think of that one? Let's take it out of the plastic here. Um, if you want to purchase the transfers or stencils, um, there is two links above in my live. There is one to find a local retailer near you, or if you already purchased from a retailer, you can go to them and get these, or you can um, use my affiliate link and look on that as well. Okay. Oh, I like that. We're gonna do it. Molds on the bottom would be beautiful. That's a really great idea too. If I had some already poured, uh, that would be a great thing to add to the bottom here. Good thinking. Okay, 
So I'm gonna do something like that and then just kind of let it overlap a little bit. And we're gonna use the, um, and I'm gonna put some gloves on, guys. You don't need to put gloves on, but I, if I apply a transfer after this, I'll have paint all over my hands because I know myself well enough. <laughs> so let's put some gloves on so we don't ruin our transfer next. Okay, and I am going to use, I'm gonna use a little brush. So this is an S30 clean on brush. And I'm just gonna dip right into the Iron Gate chalk paste. It's like a, it's a, it's a black, it's pretty much black, I would say. And then I'm just gonna stipple. So you could use a roller, you could use a sponge, you could use um, this tool, your burnishing tool. And I probably actually would have used my burnishing tool but I probably am gonna to need to use it again so I didn't wanna get paint all over it. Okay, so I'm just gonna step on holding this by hand. Uh, you, and I'm gonna come up a little because I kinda of like the way that when it blends the transfer and the stencil together so it doesn't look like I just stamped it somewhere. So we'll just kinda of come, come up over that. Stippling is fun too, or sponging, uh, if you wanted to do a multicolor stencil, you could have different paints on your stencil, or I'm sorry, on your brush, like half and half or something, and then stipple it like this, and then that would give you, um, you know, like you could do blue and white on something, or um, pink and red, and kind of give it dimensions, and orange and yellow would be great complementary colors to, they would complement each other well on that, to blend like that, if that makes sense. <laughs> and then the other thing I was gonna say is you can tape this down. I, I like to hold it down with my hand, uh, but if you feel more comfortable, you can take painter's tape and you can tape down the stencil tight, and then you can just paint right over the top of your stencil and it will stay down. I think I missed a comment somewhere, so I'll come back in just a second. Okay, so I'll just kind of pull that up and around right there. All right, you guys wanna see it? I do. All right, let me set this aside. Let's see what we just did to our beautiful little floral piece. Oh, that's cool. What do you guys think? Now I feel like it needs some black up here too. Like kind of fill in that. I don't know, do you think? Maybe a little here. I like that together though. Look how beautiful that stencil with just those flowers. That looks cool. I like it. Yeah, I think I'm gonna add just a little bit of the stencil up here. I feel like it needs something. Kind of to balance it. I don't know. Like, it'll just kind of put it on an angle there. And if you don't want me to do this, it's too late because I already touched <laughs> the stencil down. <laughs> All right, so we'll go right here. Let's add just a little bit of this vine to our top to balance it out and then see what, see how we're looking. And I apologize, I don't mean to be covering this up so you can't see it. Uh, the way to clean your stencils is you can use baby wipes to wipe them off. Uh, you can not clean them off and use them again like I did. <laughs> but if I wanna clean this off now, I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna put it in some water, um, just like that, let it soak for a while, and then it, most of it will just come right off. So, okay. Let's see, we've got a little outside of our edge there. I'm feeling better about that. Maybe it needs just a little bit more, like a little bit of a floral right here. Let's do that, just a tiny bit of floral right here, and then I feel like there will be enough blank space but they will have enough filled in too. So we'll finish off with that. Okay, let me set this aside. And hey, remember this little section I saved? I said maybe we can use it somewhere. Let's see if we can. Let's see, let me look at this for just a sec. Yeah, okay. So, you can see I have a flat edge here. If I put this on, it's gonna look like my transfer just got cut off and it won't have, 
it'll be like, oh, where's the flower? It's missing. But if I want to avoid that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this part here, how this has some flow and movement to it, and I can take those little tiny leaves and I can cut it into the shape of a leaf and then I can apply it and it won't look like it just ends suddenly. What am I putting in the frame? I don't know. I might, I don't know, I might put pictures of my family, uh, see how it matches in my house somewhere. If it doesn't, I sometimes I'll do a set of them and I'll sell them. Sell the painted frames. So if I do that, I will list it on my page and um, go from there. Okay, so now you see the top. It's very small, but you can see how it has like a leaf shape and it doesn't, let me find a piece of paper. It doesn't look like it ends just as abruptly. It looks like the leaves kind of go up and maybe keep going, all right? So then I won't have that harsh line on my piece. And then I can kind of look at it and say, okay, do I think it needs it like down here? Or do I think it needs it more up here? Well, sometimes you have to take it off and then carefully hold it over without sticking it down and kind of say, okay, look right there or I'm thinking up in the middle. Yeah, I think right in the middle there. Okay, so then I'll just take it and carefully set it in the middle and add it there. Let's see. I did wanna show you guys on one of my other picture frames. So if you're okay with me going just a couple minutes longer, I'll finish this one up and then I'll show you the other um, stencil I was planning on doing the other picture frames that I painted. I'm just gonna go over it one more time. Pull down my bead lines. Okay, and there we go. Isn't that fun and funky? This would be so cute. This would be so cute to put a quote in <laughs> or put a picture in. Um, if you had some, I know some people have like old hankies and things like that, that maybe their grandmother, great grandmother um, had put initials in or knitted. I think that would be really beautiful to do a keepsake, something special like that and put it in the center of a frame like this. Um, grandma's recipe of something you loved, make a bunch of these, grab your frames at the thrift store. A lot of times you can find frames for 50 cents, $2. Um, so look for something. Put your favorite recipe in, share it with your family, give it as a gift, um, and, and kind of get creative that way. I think that would be really fun. Try something different. So let me just show you the stencil on this other one. So just to go back, this is what we started with, and this is where we ended up, okay? I love it. <laughs> it's cute, now I'm excited to do the other one. <laughs> and then, or another thing you can do is have like, have a night with your friends, and um, have them you know, get together and then everybody bring picture frames. And you never know, you might find some that really match your house better than others, the shape or style, and then kind of swap them and paint them and make them your own. That would be super fun. Then instead of each of you buying your own stencil, you could you know, put some money in a pot and then uh, you could just get, you know, we're gonna say everyone's gonna pay 10 bucks and we're gonna get a couple stencils and a couple transfers and we're gonna have a night with our friends and uh, and paint um, old picture frames. So you can make it really fun. Okay, I'm gonna show you just real quick on this. Let's see. Actually, let's do this gray one. I think this would be fun. Okay, on our big gray. So this was the country, or sorry, this is gravel, the chalk, chalky pasting gravel. And let's see what stencil that we have here. That's, oh, this one's cute. This little, the little tiny. Should we do that? That might be cute. Let's do it. Okay. All right, so 
I'm gonna set it about there. Let's see. We'll do it right here, okay. And I'm gonna use the same, I'm just gonna go with the iron gate, the black that I already used. And I'm gonna throw my gloves on real quick. Oh. And then we will paint it in that. I love those, you could do a really cute colorful one. Maybe I'll do that on my other frames and show you guys a picture. Okay. Oh, that might be inside out. Oh well, it's fine. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna carefully take it like this. The thicker your paint is, the more crisp of a design you're going to get unless you apply it thin with a roller. So I'm going to apply it with the chalk paste and carefully stipple it, not too much, so that I get a good design, a crisp design. And I'm just gonna hold it and be very careful not to move it. This is a little bit more, this, oh, well, I'm gonna have to fix that. This is a little bit more delicate, this stencil is than the other stencils. So be very gentle with it. Apply it super thin or stipple it on with a thicker chalk paste like this, okay? Oh, and I gotta fix my frame, but what do you guys think? Isn't that pretty? So I could keep going and make it really consistent or I can take this and I can say, okay, let's kind of match this dude up here because it, it repeats. So you can match it up and keep going and have a consistent um, pattern or you can kind of, and, or, and then you can be really have it clean and go all the way across or you can match it up, take your paintbrush and just kind of randomly stipple. So I'm just gonna kind of make a pattern of it's like, going up and then that is going to make it look like it's distressed, like it's fading in and out. So I can go here, kind of, let's see, about like that. Same thing, just kind of not cover the whole thing and then come up here And do the top and then I'll show you guys what it's gonna look like okay oh, and minus our little top that I messed up oopsie that's fine okay then we can kind of see that kind of cool old distressed base uh, I could add some molds over top I could keep going, I could still fill it in and make it perfect or kind of leave it distressed and then I can distress the top, let some of those base colors show through it and it will look like a cool aged distressed frame. So I hope that you guys got some inspo from this, that you can go and uh, paint some frames, do something cool with them and share with others. And I hope you have a wonderful day. See ya.